Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is looking at the chart of David Bowie. David was born on January 8th, 1947. I wasn't sure what year he was born off the top of my head. And uh, 1947 is the same year that Elton John was born. So these English rock stars were born several years after the Beatles. And in some cases, like John Lennon and uh, Ringo Starr, quite a few years, like seven years after. And the reason that I'm bringing that up is because, it, you, you know, you talk about generational influences. And of course, a, a seven year difference is not a generation, but just those um, influences just from a few years prior can be massive in terms of how an artist um, is inspired. Because I have read um, Elton John's autobiography and he, you know, spoke about the Beatles and how he um, was uh, a fan of their music. You know, he didn't speak extensively about it, but he was a friend of John Lennon's at one point in the 70s. So in any case, um, David Boy being a Capricorn is kind of hilarious because we think of Capricorn as a traditional sign. And actually, I think England is a Capricorn country. Um, there, there was this thing I was, like this article I was reading, and uh, supposedly there were two options of, of how England was either this sign or some other sign. And I would definitely say it was Capricorn. I don't know, maybe I'm confusing that with a different country. But, you know, you think about England being so aware of the different classes, and that's exactly how Capricorn thinks. And even in terms of looks, the chiseled face that David Bowie had, he was a very attractive man, but it had that Capricorn kind of like bone structure <laughs> with the high cheekbones and stuff like that. And although that was not his, that uh, Capricorn wasn't on the ascendant, his rising sign was Aquarius. And Aquarius is not only rule, ruled by Uranus, but also by Saturn, just like Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So perhaps that's where that comes from. But I, I do believe that your sun sign can influence how you look as well. So I'm just going to, go through his um, inner planets and and uh, explain what they might mean. I'm not uh, somebody who has read a biography on him, so I don't really know everything about his life, but it's now that I think about it, I did read a biography many years ago by his ex-wife, Angie Bowie. Uh, by the way, she was the one that the Rolling Stones, and I'm sure it was like Mick Jagger wrote that song, Angie. I think he wrote it, or maybe Keith Richards wrote it, I don't know. Or they wrote it together, but yeah, so Angie Bowie, I read her autobiography, and she talks about her experiences with David, and then I read this woman named Cherry Vanilla, <laughs> And she was, I don't know what you'd call her. She wasn't a groupie, but she was a fan. I can't remember her exact title, but she was, you know, she kind of was one of those people on that scene at the time in the early 70s, kind of a character. It was. It's a very enjoyable book. I highly recommend it. And um, so I know a little bit about him. So his inner planets, his sun is in Capricorn, his moon is in Leo. This will turn out to be very important and influential. His Mercury is in Capricorn, his Venus is in Sag, his 
Mars is in Capricorn, and of course he has Aquarius rising. And um, so Capricorn is a traditional sign. Uh, Capricorn is not the sign that you would expect to dress the way that David dressed in the early days. Now, what is interesting is if you think back to David's image in the early seventies, he had an androgynous look to him. Uh, the glam rock which was um, not, of course, uh, not just him, but T-Rex and some of these other acts in the early 70s, the glitter rock, you could call it that too. And um, later on, every time I saw him, he would be dressed in a suit, very t like a tailored suit. That's totally Capricorn. His moon uh, being in Leo is important because he did have a theatrical air about him. And he was um, one of those people that had this kind of charisma that was, I'd almost call it like an anti-charisma in a certain sense because it was very, very different. His rising sign the rising sign can be the image. So his rising sign as Aquarius um, showed him to be quite unusual. And even, you know, uh, one of his personas was uh, a Ziggy Stardust. And you think about Aquarius and that's kind of galactic. And there was this quality about David Boy that seemed almost like he was an alien. Remember he had the thing, the man who fell to earth or something like that. So there was always that theme of outer space. Oh yeah. Like, um, space oddity. Uh, one of my favorite songs. So, um, all of that, um, may have played into his influences, especially early on. And, the rising sign, I definitely feel is very strong up until the age of 30. I've said this many times and I did read something like this. So I didn't necessarily make it up, but I really, um, resonate with that based on my own life. So that's why I keep promoting that. Some people may not uh, agree with that and that's okay, but I, I feel that that's the case. And since he was born in 1947, we would uh, think that this influence might have carried him through until the latter part of the 70s. And it kind of goes along with what I'm saying, because um, that Aquarian kind of being freakish or, you know, very unique um, outer space kind of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, image was something that he cultivated um, up until a certain point. And then you see him dressing more traditionally, more, like I said, in a tailored um, suit too, where he really uh, looked dapper. But, but the thing is too, now this is a very interesting thing because David um, at one time claimed to be bisexual. I I'm, I hope I'm correct about this. And there was this so-called um, situation where his ex-wife, Angie Bowie, who I believe was married to him at the time, walked in on him in bed with Mick Jagger. Now they were, I think they were both, I don't think they were, <laughs> doing anything at the time. And I, but I do think that they were naked, but she was later on, she said, well, you know, it could have been that they just kind of passed out and they're, you know, they came home from being at the club and, and that it wasn't anything more than that. But, you know, she was promoting a book when she first revealed that detail. I remember when that came out and it was, you know, 
everybody was talking about it. But she said that it happened with other men as well. And yet I remember reading something where he said that he was, um, that he said he was bisexual because it was, uh, fashionable at the time or something like that. And I apologize if I got that wrong. I can't, you know, trying to look that up. I'm not even going to bother, but I just remember an interview with him or something like that. And I totally believe that he would do something like that only because Capricorn individuals are looking to advance themselves in life. They're uh, raising their station in life. The mountain goat is climbing, it's ascending uh, the summit to, to the highest point. So it makes sense that he might do something like that. Um, it also makes sense that he might have been, you know, just experimenting, being that Aquarian that didn't have any kind of preconceived notions. And maybe, um, I don't know if I would associate androgyny with Aquarius. Your rising sign can certainly showcase the kind of uh, appearance that you have and how you appear to others. So those are similar things, but it talking about mannerisms and th and just the way that you carry yourself and how other people assume you are, which may not be the case. And Jim Morrison also had Aquarius rising. There's an electric quality. And I think Aquarius is associated with electricity that can give that person a charisma, but it's a live wire type of charisma. So there is an electrifying quality. And I remember watching one of his videos on YouTube and the way that he came onto the stage, this was from the early seventies, was just, it just took my breath away because it was so powerful. And I'm not like even that big of a fan of his. Um, I like some of his songs, but he's just not, you know, what I t uh, am into all the way, but I could still definitely appreciate that. So uh, with the moon and Leo, the person needs attention. And I'm not saying that in a pathetic sort of a way. I'm saying that Leo is a very creative sign. And part of creativity is in the way that a person performs. So it's not just a, a case of somebody who's painting a painting. Um, with fire signs, it can actually, there can be a physicality to it as well. So the person who, uh, is a musician, a person can be a talented musician, but they're not necessarily a showman. And the person who is a showman is somebody who is putting their essence into their bodily movements and everything like that. And it's mesmerizing to watch such people. And um, David Boy certainly had that within himself. And it's not surprising that he actually acted because uh, he was in, I think it was The Elephant Man. I'm not sure how many movies he was in, but um, he was he was just a very compelling presence. And he had that natural... Um, dramatic air about himself. His Mercury was in Capricorn. And it's interesting too, because there was something haunting about his voice. If you think about it, it had this, I don't know if you would call it a howl, but it's, it was a very distinctive voice. And, and it, it, to me, 
Um, I'm not an expert on English accents, but to me, it almost had like kind of an upper crust feel to it. Now he may have born, he was born in Brixton, wherever that is. They say in parentheses, London. Um, I don't know if he was, you know, what kind of level of income he came from, but you know, some of those accents in England are very posh. I don't know. He just seemed like he had that. And, um, the funny thing is that I could see somebody like, let's say he did come from like a lower middle class or a lower class background. I could see him imitating a higher class background just to give that image. Whereas the Beatles, um, and I think the Stones, I think Mick Jagger did this as well. They adopted a lower class or working class accent to seem more street, you know, uh, <laughs> even though that, you know, some of them didn't have much money to begin with, but, um, they wanted to have that street cred. They didn't want to sound like, you know, suburbanite middle-class people. So, so David's Venus was in Sag, Mars in Capricorn, so more Capricorn energy, and his sun and Mars formed a conjunction, as did his sun and Mercury, and then um, Aquarius rising again. Now, um, speaking of those conjunctions, the sun and Mercury, I, I've been looking for information about this. I really am going to go with the fact that, or go with the premise that Mercury can be the singer. You know, doesn't that make sense that it would be the case? And yet I have never, uh, read anything to that effect. When somebody has a conjunction between the sun and Mercury, they can have the, um, identity as somebody who is a scholar or at the very least intelligent. Mercury is never far from the sun. So this is hardly a rare aspect, this conjunction, but I don't have it. And some people don't have it automatically. He also had that uh, conjunction between the sun and Mars, and that can give kind of that Aries influence of being very, um, forceful, being very energetic, being very ambitious, maybe being a bit impatient. Um, a conjunction between the moon and Saturn and this can be somebody who's very serious. So even though the moon is in Leo and Leo can be quite playful because it forms a conjunction with Saturn, this can make the person very serious about creative matters. Um, so that's very interesting, but here's something that I, just found out when I was looking that stuff up about him being in bed with uh, Mick Jagger is that they say that he had, um, what they called the family curse in his family that he struggled with schizophrenia. I had no knowledge of that. If you knew about that, please elaborate in the description below you know, how long you've known about that, because it's very interesting. He had several members of his family who were, um, schizophrenic and also that were in, um, asylums even. So that's very serious. Um, but looking at his charts, I can actually see what, where this may be coming from. But I want to make a point about schizophrenia. Um, my understanding is that it's an organic brain disorder, but as we know, the flesh 
is hardly the end all be all, right? So everything is also influenced by um, a higher aspect of ourselves. So, you know, we can have two things at the same time. We can have something that we're born into, but it also has an energetic component. Um, and maybe, who knows, maybe even a karmic component, meaning that it is um, coming with us from past lifetimes. Um, another example of this would be addictive tendencies. But anyway, some people might look at schizophrenia as disassociative disorder. I'm assuming that's the same thing. But, you know, hallucinations, uh, this form of madness. And yet I believe that schizophrenia is somebody who is very aware of other uh, realms of existence, but they have a um, lack of control in being able to navigate this current reality and those realities. So if you, you know, I'm sure most of us have seen um, schizophrenic screaming in the street uh, and they're all by themselves. I have, um, I remember one time a few years ago, I was witnessing this woman talking to God and it was fascinating. It was absolutely fascinating. I just kind of like was sitting in the laundromat and I even, I think I followed her outside because I really wanted to hear the rest of her a dialogue with God. Um, and she was just like staring at all the cars that were coming by. And she was like talking to Jesus about each one of these people that were in the cars. And I just, I'm, I'm just like totally absorbed by that, uh, you know, with that kind of thing. But, um, I, I, that's what I believe. So it's possible that he came from, you know, we could reframe it and say he came from a family that was very psychically attuned, but they were not disciplined in that, in their gifts, their abilities. But looking at his chart and seeing where this could show up, even before I had read that, I noticed that he had Neptune in the eighth house. I have done a video on Neptune in the eighth house. Another person who had this placement was Jim Morrison, as well as his girlfriend, Pamela Corson. They both had Neptune in the eighth house. It's very um, important that somebody who has Neptune in the eighth house abstains from uh, mind-altering substances because they are already out there. They're already tripping out and they don't need anything else. And I said tripping. I didn't necessarily mean plant medicine, although that might not be uh, for them either. I'm, you know, I'm not an expert in these things, obviously. I don't know anything about th that. But what I'm saying is that some people are so um, psychically attuned to other dimensions that the eighth house can be the other side. So those people who have crossed over. So somebody who, who has this placement, uh, entity uh, attachment could be a real thing if they're not careful. So the Ouija board would be a no, no as well, because that might summon some of these low vibrational entities to kind of hitch a ride on such a person because they're sensing this opening. But, um, I remember reading that, you know, spirits, you know, they call alcohol spirits and it's like, I don't know if that's really the case <laughs> that it has anything to do with entities, but, um, I remember reading that disembodied entities that are, um, you know, still in that lower vibration that they hang out in bars looking to hitch a ride on somebody and possess them so that they can get that hit from the intoxication because they are addicts. 
And even though they have no, and because they don't have a body, they're looking to attach themselves to someone. And um, that would that would kind of explain why some people go crazy when they drink. Maybe they're maybe that's demonic possession. And um, they're just like opening. They're like a portal. They're opening th themselves up to that, to be hijacked by some low vibrational entities. So it's possible that this is an indication of um, part of David's uh, issues. And I remember seeing, you know, being like such a big fan of Jim Morrison and the Doors, much more than David Bowie. I remember, um, you know, reading the biography about him, no one here gets out alive. I'm talking about Jim Morrison growing up and then, you know, having his poster in my bedroom. And then recently seeing another documentary or seeing some documentary on him and footage that I'd never seen before and just being on YouTube versus when I was younger. And it kind of gave me the willies, to be honest with you, because it does seem like Neptune in the eighth house. It seems like he was, I'm talking about Jim, that he was, uh, when he was performing, he was able to maybe go into a trance, but he also, when he was just walking around, I don't feel like it was just drugs, why he was acting the way he was. I feel like he was out to lunch, so to speak, that he was doing, um, you know, he was not here present that accounted for. And so with David Bowie uh, and, and other performers who are very compelling to watch, who knows, maybe they are going into this altered state that has nothing to do with substances and they are really um, uh, channeling, summoning forth some kind of influence from another realm that kind of energizes them or informs their actions. And it's like they're being possessed during the performance. I'm not sure. The other placement is he had the sun and Mars in the 12th house. The eighth and the 12th houses are both water houses along with the fourth, but he doesn't have any planets in the fourth. So I think especially the eighth and the 12th houses deal with the spiritual um, realms. The eighth house, like I said, it can be the other side and the 12th house can be even past lives, other spiritual dimensions, maybe other, you know, parallel realities, who knows? But um, because he has the sun and Mars here, uh, the 12th house can be the house of self undoing and mental illness or mental health. Um, this is Pisces domain. So this is one of those things that is always confounding because I think, um, Freddie Mercury had his son in the 12th too, and he was a very compelling and over the top performer. And this is supposed to be the house of solitude and might indicate if somebody has a son here that they're very retiring, that they don't really like to be in the limelight. So how can I reconcile that? Well, um, I do know that some people are very inhibited or, introverted in their everyday life, but they are able to go and do something that is very extroverted regardless. And I could, I would also say too, that with the sun in the 12th house, it is almost like putting the actual personality from this lifetime under wraps and, and 
maybe something else comes over the person because um, the 12th house would create this situation where the self was de-emphasized. It's kind of like having the sun in conjunction with Neptune. And in that case, you know, that sort of person would rarely, if ever, be a, an egomaniac because the 12th house is the collective soul. And this person would feel part of that. And so it's like being part of God. Well, if somebody is part of a greater whole, they're not there to try to stand out and be a special little snowflake. They're um, acknowledging that we are all one. Mars here can indicate somebody who has that self-destructive part of themselves. And this is ind indicative of him, at least at one point in his life, where he, you know, had quite an issue with cocaine. And, you know, that infamous interview with D Dick Cavett, where the way he looked, he was so gaunt and so gone. But still, you know, I was reading a comment that somebody made, and they said, you know, he was so... Even with all of that, he was just so articulate or intelligent. And there again, intelligence, you know, the sun in conjunction with Mercury. Um, so the with um, Mars in the 12th house, it's like having Mars in Pisces, which can indicate that, you know, Mars can be the drive in the 12th house. The person is driven to what the, what the person wants is oblivion or ecstatic union with God. And obviously, you know, some people take it upon themselves to have a lifelong quest of trying to find God. And, you know, they may drop out of society, you know, join an ashram or what, what have you. But, um, Some people try to take a shortcut by taking drugs and thinking that if they take something strong enough, they're going to be in this altered state that where they don't have to feel feelings that kind of hold them back, where they can just be connected with source energy. And if they are really taking a substance, then there's a potential for substance abuse or just dependence on something outside of themselves. But when someone has schizophrenic tendencies, um, if they take certain drugs and even something like LSD or maybe another strong hallucinogen, that it could trigger mental illness that was already inherent within the person and kind of activate it. And um, I know personally of somebody that I suspect who has schizophrenia in their family who uh, actually had that occur to them as well after taking... Uh, drugs that have that effect on them. Because sometimes, you know, you might have the tendency towards something, but because you are being very careful, you don't have to go through it. Another um, interesting thing is in that eighth house, in addition to Neptune, he had... Chiron here. And I have actually seen different placements in that eighth house for different celebrities that didn't seem to be anything that they had disclosed in their autobiographies or that were disclosed about them. And it, it does make me wonder sometimes because 
uh, even if somebody writes an autobiography, it doesn't mean that they're going to say everything that happened to them. And who knows, maybe one of these types of people or more keep secret some of those experiences that were very traumatic because the eighth house can be trauma for whatever the reason that they didn't want to divulge what was going on. The eighth house is the house of secrets and it can keep that person from explaining why they have that. Um, David had a stellium or concentration of planets in his seventh house of marriage, committed partnership. He had the moon, Saturn, and Pluto. Um, a person who has Pluto in the seventh may attract a Scorpio person as a life partner at some point. They may have a, a partner who is very controlling that could be a totally different thing. They could have a very healing relationship that that is a very transformative influence for them. Even if it's an intense one, it could still be very transformative for them. And I had actually... read about how um, Angie Bowie, I remember her taking credit for, I think it was like his basic success. I had a girlfriend at the time and we were talking about, I remember the other, you know, this other woman was, I think she had the same impression that I did that Angie Boy was really... Um, believing that she was responsible for his success. But um, he has Saturn here, and that might indicate... Uh, I don't know if Angie was older than him. I looked it up, and she actually was younger than him. Because the reason I say this is that Saturn in the seventh house can indicate marriage to an older person. It's like having Venus in Capricorn. And David had his Venus in Sag, actually. But it's, you know, obviously this is a different planet. It's Saturn in the seventh house, which is ruled by Venus. So um, what that can mean is that the person couples for the purpose of advancing themselves. Usually, you know, what we would say is marrying for money or something like that. But I could see um, that it might be being attracted to this person because this person is helping them to achieve stability. You know, Saturn is all about that and all of the goals that they have. And I, I don't um, have any reason to doubt that Angie is probably correct in some of the things that she says about how, about her influence over David, it is possible that that happened. Every sign has a motto, and I believe that Capricorn sign is I use. So I do believe that it's possible for um, so, somebody who is a Capricorn to use other people to get ahead. And that sounds like a terrible accusation, but I don't really mean it that bad in such a bad way. I just mean that Capricorn makes everything, makes use of everything at their disposal. And if that includes people, so be it. And in the seventh house, this is also the house of public relations. And this can indicate somebody with Pluto here, maybe they're very obsessed with um, promoting themselves. The moon is here as well. So um, this person may be very romantic, very 
desiring of a a partnership, especially a romantic partnership, I would say, since this is so associated with marriage. And that makes them feel emotionally together is to have um, love in their life and to, but not just love, but to have a partnership that they can um, look to or count on. I was actually surprised to see a couple of planets in the ninth house and not the 10th for David, because I naturally assumed that he was a very ambitious person and that he would have, would have that represented in the 10th house of career in his chart. Um, he doesn't even have plants in the sixth house of work. However, just because you don't have planets somewhere doesn't mean that you don't care about that area of life. I think he did care about his career. He probably was happy about his achievements. But some people never rest on their laurels and just kind of um, skate by on anything. They're always like continuing to challenge themselves. So maybe that's how he was. Oh, you know, it's very interesting. This is a perfect example of that. So David married Imam. I think that's her name or is it Iman? It's probably Iman. And I don't know. Now, I think she wasn't born in the United States. I think she might have been born in an African nation. Um, I don't know if it was Ethiopia. I have no idea. But, you know, she's a supermodel. And by the way, when I was looking up his information, did you know that David Boy was only five, nine and a half? Now, that's not short, but it certainly wasn't what I thought he was. I figured he was at least six feet tall based on his, um, just the way that he appeared to me. And so that kind of blows my mind because I was telling my partner who is like one inch taller, it was like five, ten and a half. I said, Hey, did you know that you're taller than David boy? And he was, I think he was as surprised as I was. So anyway, um, Venus in the ninth house can indicate being attracted to and falling in love with somebody from a different country, a different nationality or race. And that was Iman. She, or is Iman. She is, um, I'm assuming an African woman. She's not, not, I don't know. Maybe you could say she's African American. I don't really know where they live in the world or where she, or where they did live, if they ever lived in the United States. I imagine they lived in England. But um, that's how Venus in the ninth house is, is that you may favor people that are um, from different nationalities and things like that, or races. And that's because the ninth house deals with long distance travel and by extension having an open mind um being different being f maybe fascinated with or at the very least tolerant of different ways of living and and that expressed through another person jupiter is the ruler of the ninth house so in its own domain, it just enhances that. And that idea of expansion can be very delicious to somebody who has Jupiter in this area, because anything that, you know, makes your world a bigger place that makes you, um, broaden your perspective is something that you really enjoy. If you have this position, Jupiter can also indicate luck. Where are you lucky? And in, in, in this area, it's in, when you study something that is of a higher level, 
so literature if it's literature it's literature instead of you know lurid paperbacks it's maybe some high-minded academic type of subject matter is appealing to you okay i think i'm going to leave it there only because i wanted to just touch upon certain points and I, I just don't know enough about his life to talk about um, other aspects. But um, I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.